Okay. Um, hey, everybody. My name is Ricardo, and I was asked by Boone to jump in and say a couple of things about the Fractal Design Studio that you're currently doing. So I happened to do Boone's workshop on fractals right before the start of semester. And during, I guess it was like a week and a half, a week and a half to two weeks, we had to learn the workflow uh, as outlined by Matt in, uh, or Matthew in his manual on how to, to go from Incendia Next over to 3D modeling and documentation software. And to try and be creative along the way, see uh, how you can uh, turn a fractal shape or pattern into a design or uh, an architecture. So, um, you know, I, I, I did my submission and I submitted to Boone and he said that that seemed to be going on the right track, which is, which is uh, I guess, a good thing to hear. And he asked that I would come in and you know, discuss discuss my submission a little bit with you guys. So I will now jump on to my panel that I submitted and we'll also go through a sketching exercise and how I think is a good way to think about it. And here is the panel from um, my workshop. So what we'll do is just quickly go through it and uh, from top to bottom, how it is that we went from Incendia Next all the way to starting to develop these spaces through these process sketches. Um, by the way, it's raining in the background. I hope that doesn't get in the way. <laughs> Maybe it'll make it feel more relaxing as well. So I'll zoom in here at the top and we can first see on the top left, this is the shape that was outputted, uh, generated and um, outputted from the um, Incendia Next software. It's called a Quaternion IFS Fractal. Now I'm not too sure on the terminology of, of it, but I did like the, the shape, you know, the, the tiered nature of the fractal and its non-symmetry. Sometimes I think non-symmetry non makes it feel more interesting where you can do a say opposite ends of any one thing. Um, I then took the shape here and I actually cut it uh, with itself. I, I literally flipped this shape, uh, almost like a 90 degree flip and intersected it with the, the original one and created these voids, these negative cutouts here, uh, j just to see how that could make uh, maybe the space feel more interesting and, dynam and dynamic just for the, the purposes of this quick workshop. I also chopped off the end of the tail here because uh, um, there was less processing power needed, I guess, to do the, the task of the workshop. And then, um, yeah, it, it was the workflow from Matt. And thank you, Matt, for uh, going into detail and finding out how to make this all work for us. Uh, it was his workflow that allowed me to go through these steps. Um, and then here we have uh, some sketches starting to look at how, you know, these negatives that we created here, maybe how they interact with the land, assuming that this is a sloped site. Now, um, one of the things that's important to mention with this is that there's, there was no site assigned to us or, you know, building function or anything like that or program. So for that reason, this is quite a, um, it was more so for the exploration of inhabiting the fractal itself. And uh, I guess once you layer these other factors on top, which uh, I am presuming is part of your studio, then it'll become more um, more thoughtful and resolved and more considered in a way. But anyway, so through here now, you know, I was able to go from Incendia Next into Rhino and then into Revit here, we can see the, the shape and um, I'll zoom in here. There you go. You can see all the, the little um, the triangle that make the mesh of the fractal there. And I then cut this section through here, this through this line that you see. And then here at a one to 100 scale, you can see how I started to think about the space inside of this fractal three dimensionally and how uh, it might feel. Um, again, there was no function to these spaces, but just as a experience, that's what we were trying to, to look for. Um, we have we started annotating a couple of things as well in terms of uh, documentation, which your tutors are going to help you with. Um, and 
you know, I started to design these sort of columns, this uh, superstructure here that helps to carry the load off the fractal shell. And uh, I made these columns so they look, in a way, kind of like the fractal, so that it, it sort of belongs together in a way. I, I would encourage everyone to be quite creative about how you approach the design uh, of the fractal. You can think of... Um, you can think of may potentially applying the fractal at different scales. So here, of course, we're looking at fractal in the scale of a building, uh, but it could be at the scale of furniture or maybe balustrades, screening elements, columns like you can see here. So, so there is something emerging there that is referential of the fractal and helps you carry that architectural language from the macro to the micro scales. Um, it's also important as you bring your fractal into 3D software that um, you explore it at different scales to see what it feels like um, as you stand in there. So here, you know, we, we put a person in there and we can start to see the clearances and the proportions of things um, and, you know, measurements, distances between things. And yeah, so this was just a starting point. There's a lot of little detail callouts here, which I didn't dive into, but um, I'm presuming, again, I'm not too sure, but as part of the studio that you will get the chance to go in um, at a, a more, a closer scale and document some of these details potentially for submission, especially if they are details that are you believe are important to your design and your design intent. Okay. So yeah, there you go. This was just a quick exercise here, literally slicing through the, the fractal and then looking at how it, it would feel as a documented sort of section. And then of course there's the, I guess the, the, the fun, uh, more visual part of it here with these uh, process sketches where I have taken the base off the, the 3D and then started layering on top lines and um, I did all of this inside of a, a, a software on my tablet called Concepts but there's different software that you can use as well to, to do sketching and if you prefer hand sketching that is completely fine as well but I love the the combination of the the precision from your um, 3D model combined with the the freedom of the the hand-drawn element um, but we can see here how this space starts to feel. And by the way, none of this is like to Australian standards or anything. And uh, I will let Boone decide to what extent we should be detailing and developing your design to meet Australian standards, right? Um, because it could become uh, tricky with some of these very sloping and organic forms, but who knows, maybe there is, uh, there are clever ways to work around it and make it all work, even from a, a feasibility perspective. And again, your tutors will be helping you with this along the semester. Um, we can start to see here some of these columns here continuing through into this this upper space of the shell of the fractal. People standing here, there's this guy laying down, this guy here, some people over there. Um, the integration of nature within the fractal is something that was really interesting to explore as well. How is it that creating openings in the fractal shapes the experience and makes it feel more dynamic and helps to celebrate these qualities of the fractal? I'll leave that to you guys to, to explore. But here's just an example, of course. Um, and here again, the same kind of area, but from a different perspective, um, we can see people hanging around this area. And again, the columns that sort of helps you carry the, the load of the fractal shell all the way down to the ground. And then here we can see to the right, a couple of um, these big steps that I thought would tie in quite well with this sort of moving, um, waving element of the fractal there. And maybe this window could be integrated here that sort of helps to emphasize the sort of descent. Um, yeah, and I think like <clears throat> we'll go through the 3D model um, and just fly around a little bit just to see how the fractal feels uh, through its many different areas. 
So I just thought to mention as well a text that you might want to refer to as you're going through this unit and maybe um, through future studios potentially is a book called Opportunistic Architecture. It's a book written by a New York based architecture practice called LTL or Lewis Tsurumaki Lewis Architects. And in this book, they talk about um, opportun being op opportunistic, but not in a negative kind of way, but really finding opportunity out of um, rules, out of constraints, out of um, other conditions and circumstances of your particular project. Now, this is quite relevant, I think, to fractals. And that's because fractals, they have a lot of inherent qualities uh, that come with them, right? So, um, and the, the amazing thing is that as you move around the fractal and as you say experience it in 3D, um, and you, you move around it, you will find that there's a lot of unique qualities for different areas of any one fractal. And to see these areas, say from a first person perspective and, um, and then investigating, I guess, how it is you can leverage those unique qualities for specific experiences or uh, types of functions, uh, the program of the building, I think that's where the magic is at in this, in this particular unit. Um, and yeah, I would encourage everybody to try and think outside the box. How is, can you take these unique qualities and leverage them and uh, make the most of your fractal? So I just thought to show, so this is the book here. There you go, Louis Tsurumaki Lewis, Opportunistic Architecture. And in this book as well, they have, I really like their drawing style. You can see there, it's a combination of um, hand-drawn lines with the, the underlay from a 3D software. And I think it's a really good way to think about designing and I find myself, I do that a lot at work, at, at practice, and as well as for this fractal workshop that I, I did, I also did that a lot, which you, you're about to see on, on the panel. It's a good way to think. It gives you the precision of the 3D model, but then it gives you the, the freedom and the animation of uh, the hand drawing on top of it. So it's a, a combination of, of, you know, the best of both worlds. So. So just jumping over to my tablet view now, and or you can see the gorillas um, background. Uh, jumping onto Concepts, which is the app I use to design um, a lot of the work I design. And here there is this this one file that is um, I made for this Fractals workshop. And I just thought to to jump in and do a quick you know how do I go about sketching and thinking about these spaces? Well. Here is one view I haven't developed yet. Um, what's happening here is that we have this base underlay that has been generated by a 3D rendering software. In my case, I have been using Enscape, but you can use other software like Twinmotion or um, Lumion, whichever one you're comfortable with. And uh, yeah, use that as, as the underlay and then start to explore sketching over the top in this manner. And you can do it on a a tablet app like this, or you can do it on pen and paper if you prefer that as well, and see what you can do. Immediately, some things that jumped out to me here are uh, these canal almost, uh, these um, recesses on the ground, and maybe they could become part of the design somehow. They could become maybe tunnels. They help to separate uh, different air aspects of the program. They could become maybe you know, water canals, uh, a water slide, something like that. And then uh, further down the back, there's this area of the fractal that is more horizontal and vertical. Maybe it is better suited to be maybe a work area or something like that, because we can integrate these horizontal and vertical planes, which are more practical. And then here, uh, some bridges potentially that, that connect these higher areas of the terrain of the fractal thinking about maybe these these elements beyond could be windows. They, they are framed quite nicely by the fractal. Um, this area here could serve as more of a thoroughfare to connect, um, um, I guess, perpendicular to, to the bridges. Uh, looking at a skylight up the top there, bring additional natural light into the, the space. And then, of course, the integration of nature, which I, I've Oh, always love to to explore and it's usually quite a fun 
a fun part. Maybe there's more loose vegetation in some areas, just pockets to, to enhance the experience of the space. But then towards the left here, maybe this is more of a screen kind of uh, taller plants. And so it helps to create more of a public private, even dynamic within the, the, the fractal. And, you know, as, as we go through this as well, we can start thinking about the zones and we can see here, you know, how things are, are connecting, but at the same time they are being uh, separated and helps to, to make it more organized. And here's some guy is going down the Wii, like that. There you go. He's having fun. All right. Um, but there we go. Some of the, the qualities that were present in this fractal are being leveraged here to, to facilitate, to permit these types of functions. And then there, just drawing the, this sort of zone separation, how we can begin to section these areas. But at the same time, it's all visually connected. And then here, just a couple of annotations. I'm just changing, change the color here so it's more visible. And yeah, it is, again, that, that theory that's a, a philosophical standpoint from the LTL book of being opportunistic and finding opportunity out of these conditions from the fractal. And on that note, thank you guys for listening to me speak here. Um, enjoy the studio, have fun, and I'll see you around. See you.